Welcome to WTF Wednesday, and my name is Linda Ray, and we have a special guest coming up in a few minutes, so hang tight. I'm kind of excited about it, but today we're going to be talking about will the PPP loan forgiveness be as complicated as applying for the loan itself? The situations, the subtleties, the secrets, oh, the suspense. So we're going to be with you when we come back. So let's go. That's not to say that we're not glitches and there are still glitches happening. Welcome to WTF Wednesday, where every week we talk about stupid <laughs> that we've encountered that you should try to avoid. Oh. Guess who got haircuts? Ooh, 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 ooh. Um, I got a haircut. Oh, she got a haircut. And I'm drinking coffee. Well, okay. Well, that's so all there is. That's I mean, all there is. Coffee. But did you notice? Okay, so we're like getting on in age. He's having a big birthday, Menyana. Big milestone. I just got my hair done trying to figure out what to do with the gray, but we're wearing gray. We're our hair matches our outfit. That's just crazy. I'm actually wearing a Batman shirt, to be clear, <laughs> because I'm Batman. <sighs> Kelly Pirro is with us. Hi, Kelly. Woohoo! What's happening, girl? So if you are here with us live, thank you, thank you, thank you. Please comment from wherever you are tuning in, whether it's YouTube or LinkedIn or Facebook. Please say hello. Let us know how you're doing. And if you're on the replay, thank you so much for finding our video and for hanging in there with us. We got a lot to talk about today. We have about 14 things to talk about, some of which or we 12. know, or 12, some of which we know, and some that we don't. WTF Tim Sohn. He, Tim Sohn is our viewer of the year. Now more than ever. Hey, Tim. <laughs> Hi, Kelly. <laughs> All right, so Trev, let's get into it since you are the special guest and this is gonna be more like an interview type style situation because you're so in tune and 30 years of doing government loans and lending money, the guy kinda knows what's going on. So- um, I'm doing my Mr. Spock yeah. eyebrow. And if there's anything that you find that is helpful or useful or entertaining or educational, please hit that thumbs up wherever you are hanging out with us. So, you know, as the podcasters say, it helps people find the show. <laughs> we want everyone to see our new haircuts. Yeah. So, um, okay. Trev, first question. Do I have my notes? No. Those, those are my notes. Those are your notes? Uh-oh. I, I printed out a whole script for you. I know. I always fail on the script. Urgh. Which you also forgot about WTF. WTF. There's still no stimulus. Oh, and there's no stimulus yet. And I'm going to say yes. a quote from a book. I'm not kidding. Kelly, <laughs> you know where I'm coming from here. I did all this prep work an hour ago. We have prep. We prep. It's just, you know, There's it's There's a reason why I process the loans. It's not spontaneous. Tim it's, says happy birthday. Let's just a do whole, a little pattern it's a whole, interrupt. It's a whole thing. And it's a whole thing. Happy birthday to Trevor. It's tomorrow. Thank you, Tim. Yeah. Thanks, Tim. WTF Thanks, Wednesday. Still us. no stimulus. We see Pelosi and Minuchin having a phone conversation a couple of days ago after the House of Representatives led by the Democratic Caucus once again put forth yet another compromise offer. Where's the White House? Let's not get too political. It's a rough morning for people. <laughs> the White House is absent from the negotiations. Still no stimulus for you, the business owners who desperately need it. Okay. I wanted to quote, yes. I'm, I'm reading an awesome book by Angela du Duckworth called Jean Marie. Oh, thanks. Called Grit, The Power of Passion and Perseverance. And I wanted yes. to just read a quick quote and then we can jump into all those questions. See, this was the script, Kelly, that I prepared for Linda Ray that 
Tim, th thank you, Tim, for just like bringing us back down to reality. Do we have a, a, a sound effect here where there's the sound of a bus rolling over you? Uh, we actually have a... I, I want a bus. You want a bus? Uh, no, I can't give you a bus. Right, okay. I can give you a small compact car That's screeching. Good. Okay, Angela Duckworth, an awesome book about grit, the power of passion and perseverance. Grit isn't just working incredibly hard. That's only part of it. Well, for one thing, there are no shortcuts to excellence. Developing real expertise, figuring out really hard problems, it all takes time, longer than most people imagine. And then, you know, you've got to apply those schools, those skills, and produce goods or services that are valuable to people. Rome wasn't built in a day. Here's the really important thing. Grit is about working on something you care about so much that you're willing to stay loyal to it. It's doing what you love, but not just falling in love. Grit is staying in love. Stay. Thank you, thank you. Batman thanks you, I thank you. My mom thanks you. All right, so can we just kind of sort of get to the questions that people are uh, wondering about with the PPP and the forgiveness process that's gonna be coming up? Well, um, we're launching our PPP forgiveness consultation service on October 15th. Yes, October 15th, PPP forgiveness process available for you to chat with us and let us know if, if it's something that may work for your business. But what, did, did, what happens if the employer rehired employees and did they do it in writing? What's going on with that? Well, it's not just about the rehiring, it's about the offer to rehire. So if you received PPP money, what if, and we've heard this from several business owners, what if your employee refuses to return to work for a variety of reasons, uh, which we won't go into today, uh, but your employee refuses to come back to work? you have to have similar staffing levels as when you close down for COVID so to qualify for the mm -hmm. PPP forgiveness. So what you've got to have done is documented your offer to rehire. It's not enough to have a text message. You should have uh, an email is helpful, but really we had told our business clients to send a letter and if possible, we know it's difficult to go to a post office in person, but to have sent that letter certified mail for extra super duper Batman level protection. Certainly the offer to rehire, laying out the terms, I wanna rehire you, start date of such and such a date, here's the salary, here's the position, here's the work schedule, and please respond to this communication in writing, acknowledging that you wish to return to work or that you do not wish to return to work. This is gonna be an important document whether you want to access 60% forgiveness, which uh -huh. is 60% payroll, or if you use your PPP money for all payroll and you want to attempt to apply for 100% forgiveness. Well, I think that, and if Kelly is still with us, Kelly is a professional. She's a she's an extraordinary consultant with regard to insurance agents. Ridiculously amazing. Ridiculously amazing consultant for insurance agents. and. And I worked with her personally when I owned my agency. And if there was one thing that was super Im impressed upon us, it was having protocols and process and procedures in place for, especially when it comes to personnel and hiring yeah. and firing and employees and such. So I think, you know, it's just yet another thing to have of, you know, in your book of, in your manual of how you conduct your, your saddle bag in your, yeah, your quiver. So, um, all right. I like the green arrow reference, you know, green arrow and Batman are both oh, superheroes yeah. who don't have superpowers. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So, um, the, the, one of the awesome thing, <laughs> I, I don't know. Okay. I don't know how to respond to that. One of the awesome things about Kelly's consultation service, agency performance partners, and the ridiculously amazing aspect of what she offers to insurance agencies. David Vogel! Is that uh, Kelly brings it all back down to really some basic operational uh, systems that, mm -hmm. you know, you, when you see how what, what her system are, you go, this is total common sense and goes back to the long 
traditions of sales techniques. And it's just amazing how many folks think that they're reinventing the wheel every day. And Kelly's showing them they can be ridiculously amazing just by relying on tried and true techniques. Yeah. So since we have a lot to cover, let's let's move on to um, another thing. And and I will confess that I actually don't know exactly what this means when we talk about reconciling the PPP and the EIDL utilization yeah. and how that affects and impacts a business owner. So if you share used, with us why um, one. If you used uh, a portion of your EIDL or all of your EIDL loan for payroll, you want to make sure that the utilization of those funds does not overlap the time period that you were using the PPP monies for payroll. So in other words, if just as a hypothetical, if you got a PPP loan in June and you use that for June 1st through July 15th to cover payroll, you should not have used any portion of your EIDL loan, assuming mm. you got it around the same time, okay. for payroll during that period of June 1st through July 15th in our hypothetical. That is really key. And I think this is a good time to bring up that we we launched a new video series called Advancing with Financing. And they are short clips around averaging three minutes that has to do with disaster financing. So things that we cover live in this show is, you know, just to kind of talk about it, chat through it. And if there's any questions, we can answer it live, but also to that video is just so that there's a reference point for smaller bits, chunks of information, because it's so overwhelming. Snackable information. Snackables. So- yeah, um, Now I want, I want a cookie. You want a cookie? We, you ate all the cookies. And I did actually. we have no candles for a birthday cookie for you. Failed at Aurora, no birthday cookie cake, no candles. This is my sad emoji face. <laughs> I'll get something tomorrow. Your birthday is tomorrow, by the way. All right. So can we just talk about also what is this? Raise your hand for the for those in the back. If this isn't one of the more important questions that is rattling around in your minds, um, there are money. We did lay out in the description about 14 different things. Hopefully we'll get to all of them. Probably not. But this could be one of those. So finance guru 30 years of government loans you kind of know what's going on what's the question i get to drink coffee the question's right in front of you it's like oh what? it is it's right oh look at that it's right on the screen i created a banner for it how to calculate how much ppp will progress. i don't actually know the answer to this question oh why you highlighted it i thought I that meant I, josh <laughs> By the way, we had an excellent glass of Josh Caprioli. Haircuts, Gene Salvatore. I know, Gene. We had an excellent glass of Josh Cabernet with uh, the homemade veggie and black bean soup that I made for dinner yesterday. Oh, he's, by the way, he's nudging me under the table, which is um, the signal when I'm talking too much. Uh, e except need. when we were recording the Advancing with Financing, which are pre recorded videos. He had a different kind of tap where we looked to camera two. So every time he tapped me, I was like, now what did I do wrong? Well, we had camera two <laughs> over here. And the idea was double tap with the leg under the table so we can look over here. It, uh, it's confusing being yeah. us. Anyway, okay. So how to calculate how much PPP? Well, it's 60-40, 60% for payroll, 40% for your rent. Or if you own the commercial building where your business is located, the qualified mortgage interest. Yeah, rent, we did a video rent on that, or actually. mortgage interest, um, and the qualified eligible um, utilities. Excuse me, yes. utilities. Uh, and there's some questions as to utilities. You know, does uh, paying your internet service provider because you had to increase your utilization of your website as part of your pandemic pivot? And so you bought extra services through your ISP. Does that qualify as a utility utilization? Mm. Mm. You know, it's one of those subtleties in the scenarios and different situations that many business owners have. And that's one of the things that we're going to bring to the table when we sort through everyone else's unique situations while we help them to apply for forgiveness when we roll out our program.
And again, even though I know we're live and we love seeing everyone, Jean Marie, Kelly, and Tim, and Jean, and David, thank you all hi, for Jean. coming. Hi, Jean. Marie. Coming hi, in. David. And Jean Salvatore. See how that is? Jean like Marie so and Jean. all over you. Like, yeah. see that? It's like, anyway, we have a playlist on bus. YouTube. We have a playlist on YouTube. I will get the, the bus sound effects for next week. My so playlist. I'm sure it will come in handy every week. My playlist on YouTube includes um, bootleg Led Zeppelin <laughs> concerts. <laughs> Uh, Rush concerts and an awesome guy called the Magisterium who chases fire trucks around New York City and does live video streams on YouTube of firefighters running into burning buildings. Okay. Anyway, brave we dudes. have a very brave. We dudes. have a playlist on our YouTube and channel, Dudettes. Advancing with Financing, and again, three minute chunks of things that we've already talked about here in this show with the sixty forty and the um, and the. I think that's the only one we did, right? Earth. Anyway, we're, well, we did uh, that. We we covered eligible costs. Yeah. Can, All right. So next so, question. Go ahead. Is can you ask for a longer repayment term, which is really interesting because the payments haven't started yet, and people are already concerned about repaying and what that looks like. So that just gives you an idea of how complex this whole thing is confusing and complex yes certainly yeah see what i did there yeah so anyway is this, is this a yes or no question yes you can ask for longer repayment. yes you can thus the fervent nodding here on stage yes. left uh the the original ppp program under the cares act calls for um uh, 24 months of which you know the first six months no payments and then an 18 month repayment and the interest rates one percent uh, but under the revised ppp um, guidelines that came out you can <clears throat> excuse me you can request your lender extend your repayment term to five years which mm is our recommendation to you here at Aurora Consulting. Request the five years. The money is very inexpensive at 1% interest. Um, there's no prepayment penalty. So it makes sense to request the longer term because the timeline horizon for when COVID kind of goes away or you know fades to a lower level that allows for a return to a more normal economic um, situation. To us, it makes perfect sense to have a longer repayment period just to hedge your bets against other problems with your business in the future. Mm. So yes, you can request a five-year term, a 60-month term, and Yes, here at Aurora Consulting, we strongly urge you to do so. And just want to thank Clark, too, for joining in hey, with us. Appreciate that. And thank you for uh, enjoying the content. So um, I think we touched on this already, but does it is it worth repeating on the eligible costs for PP for P forgiveness? It was at the 60-40. Eligible costs yeah. are payroll. Because there's only a few. It's not, it's, there's not a lot. Well, there's not a lot in terms of general categories, but the, the problem that we anticipate for many business owners, because everyone has a unique situation, I and mean, this is not cookie cutter stuff. So you know, eligible costs, well, payroll, within that mm -hmm. general category come several you know items that you've got to look at closely to see if you can include those in your Forgiveness calculations, such as um, health care benefits that you may pay for employees or retirement contributions to qualified retirement plans. Um, what about cash compensation? Mm, yes, we actually that was going to be one about of my questions. What about 1099 employees? What about, you know, so, so this is what falls into that eligibility? But this is where the key is for the employer if the employer is working on a fly by your seat of your pants kind of system, this could be a difficult time. This could be a really difficult time if you have expectations 
of thinking that this is going to be a done deal for you. I don't know if you already know this, but the PPP application in its first iteration Oof. was like 11 pages. And if it's anything like what happened with when the whole CARES Act was, uh, was passed, it changed multiple times midway without people even knowing that it was changing. And it was changing midway when monies were already being requested and already in the system. So my point is this, the fly by your seat of your pants system is not going to work any longer. And if you've been lucky to be successful in spite of yourself without the system, then this is going to be that forced change of, you know, maybe you're going down kicking and screaming about it, but this is like make or break because it's going to be a boatload of money you're going to have to pay back if you don't do it right. Time to get real. Anyway, so sorry. That was my little... Come to Jesus moment. Oh, I think God. what Linda's doing there is kind of teeing up for another consultation service that we will be rolling out in November, mm -hmm. which is Aurora Business Consulting is going to uh, provide a business consultant service to business owners mm -hmm. where we are similar to having uh, uh, an onboard COO chief operating officer, CFO, chief financing officer, chief marketing officer, uh, someone you can call to give etch to uh -huh. uh, and, you know, whine to and cry to and a shoulder you can lean on. We're going to roll out a flat fee service for business owners. So I think you kind of teeing that up. I teed it up. Part Listen, of our service is going to include of, organizing systems and documents. And part of this, doing these videos, as much fun as we have is doing the videos. I you, look you, like you I'm having a blast right now. You can't not have the standard call to action strategies in place. Hence my scrolling banner that says, please hit like if you find anything that's useful and or entertaining or educational uh, it helps us out. And it just kind of gives us, it, it helps the self-esteem approval seeking things we're still trying to resolve with our therapists. <laughs> I'm kidding. I got over that a long time ago. Anyway. So yes, Jean, the only free money for lack of a better term it, it, oh yeah, it was the EID advance and actually, and they took that away from everybody. Well, Gene, that, you bring up a good point, but uh, in preparing for PPP forgiveness, um, one of the things that we noticed in the PPP application was that uh, there is a an area where you've got to dis you have to disclose to the lender if you've received PPP, uh, I'm mm -hmm. sorry, EIDL advance. Now I haven't done a deep dive on it yet, but it appears to me that potentially your PPP forgiveness amount might be reduced by the amount of your EIDL advance. This is speculation. Well, it's speculation because it's just in, in reading voluminous documents well, and yeah. guidelines, you know, and yeah. nothing's completely firmed up yet. I came across this in a couple of different locations and I, you know, made a note of it and kind of scratched my head went, wait a minute, because if this is true, if you got a $10,000 grant on mm -hmm. your EIDL and it's called a grant, not an advance, it's called a grant because an advance uh, implies that you have to, you know, it's an advance on a loan you're going to get in the near future or a paycheck you're going to get in the future uh -huh. and you're going to have to subtract it from that amount or repay it. Well, it's called a grant in the CARES Act. But in my travels across the PPP documentation and especially the application of forgiveness, I've seen this come up a couple of times. And if it's true, so if you got uh, $30,000, let's say, in PPP loan, and you got a $10,000 EIDL grant, then let us hope it's not true that you're going to subtract the $10,000 from your 30. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah, yeah, keep them coming. Do we have bombs going off? Oops. That was the short version. <laughs> Okay, so um, sorry about Just that. Just another, thanks for the question, Gene, because it's great. Um, 
the the thing is that uh, or, yeah grant yeah and you're right gene a lot of people called it an advance i mean all over the spectrum lenders call in advance youtubers you know it's all over the place in the newspapers calling it it's not an advance it's a grant all right um, but, but again it points to those subtleties about the ppp forgiveness program yes um I'm changing our scrolling banner. I'm drinking coffee again because of our 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 um, theme was the S last week. What the, our theme was peas, profit and passion and all kind. I don't know. I did, a week ago seemed like a lifetime ago. Today's S's. Today's words are S's. Uh, but can we just go over before we uh, end? This is the longest show we've had thus far, and we can't thank you enough for for participating with us because this is kind of how we envisioned it. Because we're all learning together, and you know we're in this together now more than ever. I know Tim is not with us, but Tim Sohn, now more than ever. I'm getting that on a T-shirt for that guy because I love that guy. Um, so what do you want to just reiterate the covered period because you had mentioned about the utilization of EIDL monies versus PPP money well, covered period is going to be very important in, in your forgiveness application. Um, it covered period begins the date that the funds were dispersed into your business bank account from the PPP loan. Um, and you know, initially it was an eight week you know, two and a half month, eight, 10 week um, covered period, which has now been extended to 24 weeks, although you can still choose um, the eight week covered period is going to be a very important aspect of applying for your PPP forgiveness. So I just want to say this as we close the show, if there is anything that we did not cover that you expected us to cover we would love to hear from you and uh, you can send us an email to curious at auroraconsulting.biz. You can check out our website, auroraconsulting.biz, where we have an entire page on SBA updates, even though it's was, ever evolving. It's ever evolving. And actually we haven't posted because there hasn't been anything of noteworthy to speak of because there's no stimulus package for business WTF, owners. WTF, still no stimulus. So, um, but just let us know if there's anything about the disaster financing that is keeping you up at night or that's intriguing or that you want to just like talk about it and we'll talk about it next week or the week after that. Cause we're here every Wednesday at 1135 AM Eastern standard time. I'm Linda Ray. I'm Trevor and we're Aurora consulting. Financing, financing solutions, solutions for, for your business, business success, success story. story. Have a great week, everyone. Ciao. Stay safe.